Okay, so this is going to be a video on dying car seatbelts. Um, I've done this a few times now. Uh, I've got an old 1963 Ford that's got a um, really cool interior, but my seatbelts um, were really old and faded in the front, and I had no seatbelts in the back. And so I actually um, have been testing methods to die seat belts the last couple of days and these are some of the results so things you might you might hear about or read about are um painting seat belts so this this one right here is actually a seat belt that i painted let's see if you can hear this the the, the painted seat belts end up really rough and stiff and they're not to my liking you can actually hear that it's, it's very very stiff and rough so that was the lacquer thinner paint uh, seat belt. Now this one is a uh, quote-unquote acid dye seat belt. And it's important to note that these belts were like root beer brown when I started. Also they were very very dirty. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, but notice now that we've got a very nice sort of aquamarine teal. And now listen to this. Versus so when you do the acid dye, uh, you end up with a, not, a lot nicer uh, product. You know, it's just, you know, it's going to feel better wrapped around your lap or, or what have you, right? So now uh, the color of my car is not nearly this dark. So I got a few different um, dye kits from Dharma Trading Company in San Rafael, California. And um, I think this was, I can't remember, I'll show you in a little bit. But anyway... Um, this is the actual finished product for the seat belts that were already in my car. Notice there's still some stains. I mean, these are 50-something years old. It was a 1963 car. Um, overall, I like the color. So I ended up, you know, changing up how much dye I use. And in general, uh, I'm pretty happy with how these turned out. There's still some stains here that are not going to come off. I spent two hours yesterday cleaning these guys and they were just dirty 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 so it is what it is um i'm probably gonna splice this together into parts and it's gonna be really clippy and i'm not a professional video dude by any means um and i'm gonna swear a lot just because um so now here are the seat belts that i'm gonna die today and notice they are nowhere near aquamarine but Based on my experience uh, with the other brown ones, I'm going to turn the I'm going to be able to turn these kind of mustard yellow ones into a nice aqua color as well. These are um, Ford Rotunda seatbelts, uh, a little bit different than what I have in my car today, but they look like they're in really good condition. You know, you see the the fixtures, everything is nice. They have a couple of spots, so now they're not nearly as bad as my other seatbelts. Um, if your seat belts have a lot of dirt, um, you're going to want to spend a good amount of time cleaning them. So with these, all I'm going to do is take um, some shout. Notice my dirty kitchen. I haven't cleaned since making dinner last night. And I'm just going to hit the stained area with some shout. And shout states to let stuff sit for five minutes before throwing it in a wash with soapy water. So that's kind of step one. Um, step one is take your seat belts, hit the stains with shout, let them sit for five minutes. And then what I do is I have a, a sink with hot water and I've been mixing it up with Dawn... Um, dish detergent as well as laundry detergent. Depending on how dirty your seat belts are, um, you may have to go even further. So on the blue seat belts that I did yesterday, they were so dirty that they filled my sink with dirty water. I ended up boiling them in this big pot with a mix of white vinegar. Uh, at one point, dumped it out, the pot was full of muddy water, put in fresh water, then I put in laundry detergent, boiled them again for a half hour, dumped it out, and I kept doing that process until the water was no longer, you know, muddy, basically. These old seatbelts can collect a lot of dirt, so even while you see some stains, um, you can imagine, you know, if they filled a pot of water with mud several times over, they were super, super dirty. So back to the Rotunda seat belts. I've got four of them to do. They have <clears throat> very mild stains. 
I'm going to hit the stains with shout. I'm going to let them sit for five minutes um, and then wash them up a bit. And then we're going to go over to the pot to dye. So I'll be back. All right, so I got the uh, Ford Rotunda seat belts cleaned up. Um, I let the shout sit for five minutes, then I washed them in some laundry detergent, rinsed them off. Um, I think I got all the laundry detergent out of there. So the next step is I've got a uh, pot of water on the stove. I've got it at about, um, I've got it turned on about three quarters. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit four seat belts in the pot all at once, so maybe I'll do two at a time. Um, and yes, the metal attachments are still on because they're sewed on, and I'm not going to take them off. So I did this yesterday. I was uh, I made sure to uh, dry the seat belts as soon as I was done, and then I oiled them just to make sure that the actual clips... Um, don't rust or anything. So I've got my pot of water. Notice I've got a candy thermometer. Um, they really don't want you boiling these things, although they did say that uh, sometimes with nylon, you might have to bring this to a boil. I might add a little bit more water to that in a little bit, but um, the next step is your dye. So at uh, Dharma Trading Company, I picked up a couple, couple colors. Let's see if I can get it. I think I used teal green yesterday. And I actually got directions. Unlike some guys, I read directions. I don't always pay attention to them. But you notice it says to use, I think it says to use two to two and a half tablespoons of dye. Uh, I found that was too much. Um, excuse me, teaspoons of dye. I found that was too much. So I ended up, after testing, uh, going with one fairly heaping teaspoon of dye and found that to be plenty. Um, might put a skosh more in there. Then you want to mix that with, they want you to mix it with warm water or hot water. And then mix this up. It's a little chunky, so you actually have to stir it up. I've been doing this in my kitchen over a stove top and thus far I haven't made any messes that weren't easily cleaned up. This is fabric dye so I'd encourage you to keep it off your clothes but uh, it comes right off countertops and off pots and pans and all that jazz. So um, throwing that in the water. Try to get it all out. And then we want to bring the pot up to basically uh, like a simmer. So I've been trying to keep it at around 190 degrees. Um, so you want to get the pot to a simmer and then you add the quote unquote acid because this is acid dye. And don't let that scare you. The acid is white table vinegar. So. You know, many people have talked about, you know, acid dyes uh, possibly weakening seat belts. Um, I'm not going to tell you whether this is safe or not because uh, I don't want to be liable. But I've seen people test dyed seat belts before and after and, and haven't found a noticeable difference. I'll leave that up to you to inspect, but basically all we're talking about is some dye and some vinegar and some warm water. So... That doesn't scare me. Uh, this is a 50-year-old car. It doesn't have the safety standards in any way, shape, or form of a new car. So uh, I think there's probably bigger things to worry about than whether or not my seat belts lose a few fractions of a, of a percent of safety. So you see my candy thermometer is up to 200 degrees. That's about where we want it. I don't want it to boil. Um, and then what they want you to do is add the acid. They call for a quarter cup of acid. So white table vinegar on a previous round, I actually used white wine vinegar because that's all I happen to have. Um, no Tapatio or Zinfandel or olive oil. Would recommend against those. 
White vinegar, on the other hand, is what the doctor ordered. So, quarter cup. Now, you know, these are rough numbers. Um, but this is what I found to work for me. So, one teaspoon of dye, quarter cup of vinegar, and you just want to let this simmer. You don't want it to boil. You want it to simmer for a half hour or so until you get the color you want. So I'm going to monitor the temperature and uh, let this thing go for a bit. And um, I'll probably reconvene with you all uh, after the color is set in. All right, so there's the finished product. You'll notice these guys are nice aquamarine color now. This is actually three revs in. The first time around they were too light and too green so I actually ended up mixing Caribbean blue in after starting off with teal green. And that's something to consider with this stuff is you're doing it yourself and so the outcome uh, is variable and it's up to you to figure out exactly how you're going to get the color you want. Um, these seat belts are close enough, I think, for government work. You know, some are going to be, these are going to be in the front or the rear, and then these are going to be in the front and the rear. They're not going to be next to each other. So I think people are probably not going to notice they're a slight shade difference. But, you, you know, you can tell they're clearly no longer mustard yellow. They're a nice teal color, and that's the interior color of my car. So it worked out well. Um, this is, you know, one of two out of four. There's two more left in here doing their thing. Uh, but I'm happy with the result. These guys look really neat. There's still a little discoloration here. That's actually where the seat belt pulls through the bench seat. So you're not going to see that anyway. Um, and that discoloration isn't going away. So there you go. That's how you acid dye seat belts.